Hi everyone, Don Smith here, and welcome to my first attempt at video blogging. I sat down to write this month's uh, e-newsletter tip, and I wanted to write about curves and how I use curves in Photoshop and Lightroom and uh, an old technique called lockdown curves. And as I started to think about it and thought about all the screenshots I would need to uh, help you along to understand this technique, I thought it might be just better if I recorded a video. So we're going to give it a try here. And if it works, hopefully we'll do more of these. So I picked an image that I shot a couple of years ago as I was driving down along the San Mateo coast at sunset. And it's a rather dark image. And this is something I wanted to show you uh, to, to uh, kind of get this point across about a lockdown curve. And I've decided to start in Photoshop as opposed to starting in Lightroom. And this is just the raw file that is open. We've done no processing to this at all. And I'm going to come over here under my layers palette. I have it open. And if I come all the way down here to the bottom, I'm going to open up what I call an adjustment layer and we're going to go to a curves layer. And what an adjustment layer does is just a set of instructions. It's a non-destructive layer that I can uh, play around with and get the picture hopefully looking the way I'd like to uh, before I can apply all the changes to the image. So we're going to work on this layer and by default it opens up with a mask here. And the mask is white, so that means that all the changes I'm making, uh, we're going to see them and I can paint back in what I don't want. Now, here's the curves. And if you're not familiar with curves, uh, you have a di diagonal line. Everything to the left-hand side represents your dark tones. This is similar to a histogram or a levels command. Everything over here to the right side or the top right represents changes made to the highlight. So obviously I want to get this bottom portion opened up. And if I was to just grab the middle of the curve line and start pushing up, you could see that I can open up the bottom, but I do get the sky washed out. Not a great way of doing things. So let's pull this line off and reset it. And you just tug on that little nodule and it will come off. In the earlier versions of Photoshop, this was a technique I learned many years ago, we would place what's called some lockdown points. So I'm going to place a lockdown point on the middle of the curve here and maybe right up here on top to anchor these highlight points so they don't move. Then I'm going to come up here to my targeted adjustment tool and I'm just going to place it somewhere into the darker water here. And as I click, you're going to see a point uh, emerge down on the bottom there of the curves box. And I'm just going to push up to lighten that up. And you can see it starts to lighten the bottom. But again, if I push it too far, as you see, I've really bent this curve line. I kind of get this funky solarization look on the top half of the image. Not good, but I have protected highlights. So I can come over here, grab a brush tool, set the opacity at 100% and make sure I'm clicked on the mask. Make sure I have black clicked over here and I just simply paint out that effect. Okay, so that was kind of the way we used to do things and we would have to come in and keep fiddling around with this. Not a real effective way of doing it, but that's how it was done. Well, then along came Lightroom and we got these uh, develop modules over here on the right side, especially this basic develop module. And I always go in and I teach to set the white point first and I'm holding down the alter option key, set a black point. I'm just going to take most of that black out of there. And then we can open up the shadows, right? Well, when I open up the shadows, I'm restricted to 100 points and that's all I can get out of it. Well, I could come up here and fool around with the exposure you know, and then come back down here and lower down some of the highlights. And eventually, by tugging and pulling on these sliders, I can get the picture uh, kind of close to what I want. But what if I still wanted more out of, the, out of this rock area down here where it's very dark and very backlit? Well, I'm going to come down to the next module, which is the tone curve. And if I open it up and come to this bottom right, by default, you would see just that I would have the same curve that I have in Photoshop. 
I could open up and I could pull down to darken. But I'm, uh, Adobe gave us a few years later the options of what we call uh, parametric sliders. Now, as I hover over each one of these lines, you see the area of the tonal curve that's going to be affected. So if I just want the darks, a broad range of darks, I could push on that line. But as you see, I'm getting kind of this area up in here uh, that, that's brightening up my midtones in my sky, and I really don't want that. So I'm going to double click on darks. This time, I'm just going to come down here to the more restrictive shadow area, and I'm going to push on that. And as I open it up, you'll see the area opens, but it does get a little flat looking. So you'll have to come back up under your basic tab and bump in a little bit of contrast and then go back down to the tonal curve and you can maybe push a little bit more on the shadows or excuse me, the darks and then a little bit more on the shadows. But the more you push, the flatter it gets. And then you have to kind of build in your contrast. Now there's another way around this and I'm going to reset the contrast come into my tonal curve, reset darks, reset shadows, and we'll just go over and change to our, our uh, kind of more archaic way of doing the curves. And as I lighten up, I am gonna get a flat look, but if I steepen the curve, you will see that I build in contrast. So just a number of ways around the same issue, and um, you can play with this any way you would like. And I hope this video uh, actually helped you. If you could let me know and you'd like to see more of these in the future, we will attempt to do more of these. So until next time, this is Don Smith and take care.